Hi, I'm Simon Southern and welcome to Gospel Tangents. We're continuing our discussion with Australian researcher Dr. Simon Southerton. In this next episode, we're going to dig into the science a little bit deeper. What is the Cohen haplotype? How is that helpful for looking for Book of Mormon DNA in the Americas? We'll also talk about the Lemba tribe. Check out our conversation. Also, please remember to tell your friends, share with as many of us uh, of your friends as we as you can so that more people can learn more about gospel tangents now back to our conversation all right well let's jump into the science uh, again yeah. so um and i don't know how much of, of my interview with dr prego that, that you um, are familiar with but you know it, it seems to be that one of one of the big uh results that he said is, is basically DNA will neither prove nor disprove the Book of Mormon. And, he, and it seems like he says that uh, if, if Lehi came, or Nephi came to the Americas, that there were, they were such a small population that it would have died out within, you know, five or six generations. So what do you think of that argument? Well, um, certainly not endorsed by any of the prophets. It's, um, and I don't think it's consistent with the text of the Book of Mormon. Uh, if the DNA's died out or disappeared, then the, and 99.9% .9 of their DNA is Asian or Native American, then they're Native American. If um, the Book of Mormon makes fairly clear that the Jaredites and the Lehites were going to a land that God had prepared for them, a land kept from the knowledge of other nations, um, a quarter of the earth, earth that man, when man had never before been. Um, it, when they arrived, they never met anyone. They didn't say, oh, we landed and we met these people around us. They just talked about their own populations that grew and they, it tells us that they grew at ma a very extraordinary rates. Um, so, so what Hugo is arguing is that Lehi, and I've heard this from other apologists, they're arguing that uh, Lehi arrived and his family very quickly took over the leadership of the native populations that were there to build their numbers and they've done they've used that argument to justify the rapid growth in the populations yeah I remember Ugo yeah. said that the numbers don't make sense yeah it just yeah. just through birth basically yeah well in that case he's arguing that the the because they were known as the name the Lamanites and Nephites for a thousand years then the Lamanites and the Nephites must have been the ruling class of these. I mean, we've already in, Mormons have already insulted Native Americans enough to to, to claim that they've Lehi's just come along and taken over the rule of these cultures is just so ridiculous. Uh, it gets even more ridiculous when you learn that the Nephites in 250 B.C. are walking through the wilderness and they encounter the Mulekites, who have a bigger population than them and they have a city named Jerusalem so they're very much a Hebrew culture now if they're bigger than the Nephites who are filled with Native Americans they've got to be filled with Native so the same things happened again you've got the Mulekites when they arrived did they take over the native populations and rule them and and build their civilizations I mean, Native Americans they're just not these pushovers that you just walk in and take over their civilizations it's just uh, Hugo is making the conclusion that he has to because of the DNA the DNA is forcing him to make these crazy cl conclusions about the basically the vanishing Lehites that's that's my view um, so but the you know the technology is is getting much more powerful um, you guys talking about mitochondrial DNA that that's that's pretty much the past you know it's now the whole genome DNA is being analyzed and they've analyzed very closely the, the Mayan populations both with their mitochondrial DNA and with their entire genome to see where their DNA came from 633 Mayans and the Mayan civilization is where the limited geography and all the BYU scholars have, have focused their attention. 633 Mayans 
have been DNA tested and 629 have an Asian DNA lineage. Another th three have a, an African lineage and then one has a European lineage. There's no Middle Eastern DNA. So Mesoamerica is the same all the way through Mesoamerica. Vast numbers have been tested. It's like about two and a half thousand now been DNA tested. So they just can't find any, there's just no Middle Eastern DNA. So that to, to be such a vanishingly small proportion of the population and then to rule everyone and to do it in two civilizations, the Mulekites and the Lehites, give me a break. <laughs> Sorry. It's not good enough. It's a poor. It's a very poor explanation, and it doesn't marry with the Book of Mormon. The, this sort of vanishing genetics just doesn't fit. I, I remember one of the things that we did talk to, to Dr. Prego about was he said something about uh, in in the Book of Jacob that there are concubines, and he says typically uh, concubines come. Are, you can think of them as sex slaves, hmm. but they're usually from another population. So he does say there are some hints that there were other people here that, uh, uh, you know, the, the concubines would be an example in the book of Jacob, that maybe some of the Nephites were, um, you know, taking some indigenous peoples and, you hmm. know, or indigenous women. So you don't buy that argument? Or you, or, oh, look, I mean, there's, there's absolutely no doubt. There were Native Americans everywhere. Mm -hmm. What's in question is, were there Lehites? So there were Native Americans everywhere, all the way through North, Central and South America. Massive civilizations. So I don't need the Book of Mormon to convince me that there were other people there. There were other people there. Okay. Um, the book of, trouble is the Book of Mormon tells us virtually nothing. It doesn't reveal anything about them. It's silent about the other people that were there. Yeah, he can read all those things into the concubines and stuff like that, but um, that's because he's trying to defend its truthfulness. But, but isn't that the same way with the Bible? I mean, with the Bible, you you know, it's, it's the history of Israel. You don't learn very much about the Greeks, very little about the Romans, very little about, some, you know, even the Egyptians. But they are mentioned in the Bible. They are mentioned. And they do exist. <laughs> Uh, and all this, a lot of the cities in the Bible. But if you are, read, are if mentioned. you read the, only the Bible, you would have a maybe an overinflated sense that Israel was much more powerful than. Yeah, and the, the Jews did have an overinflated sense of how important they were in, in the world. I, but we don't want to go into that down that track. But look, yeah, I'm I'm aware of all of the uh, apologetics where they're trying to, you know, find little snippets of evidence that the in the Book of Mormon there were other people there. Um, there were other people there, they were everywhere. Um, what's in question is, were the Book of Mormon people there? And I don't believe they were. Okay. Um, I'm pretty convinced of that. Okay, so another one of the, uh, yeah. the, the claims was, uh, uh, anytime there's European, and he, he, it sounded to me like he would say that Middle Eastern would be combined with European. Yeah. Um, that we always assume that that DNA came from after Columbus but we don't know that it could have come before Columbus. Do, do you agree with that? Well, f there's a couple of mistakes he's making there. Um, European DNA is not Middle Eastern DNA. Um, Middle Eastern populations, and we know this from DNA, it's being confirmed by DNA as well, but from history, Middle Eastern populations and Western European populations have been largely separated for 15,000 years. Okay. How do you distinguish between European and Middle Eastern? The two, two different locations. So, so, so Spain, Portugal, England, the Western European countries, France, Western European countries, and the Middle East being Palestine, the Arabian Peninsula, where, where the Jewish populations were. Those two areas of land, even though they're connected, um, the vast majority of people in those two regions have been separated for 15,000 years. There's been not an awful lot of gene flow between those populations. So you can go and look on, there are some studies that have been done where you can click on all these populations and see how, how much genetic relatedness they have with other populations throughout that area. 
And if you click on the Middle Eastern populations, there's a few surrounding populations, very, very few connections into Western Europe. And same in Western Europe, there's not a lot of connections into the Middle East. They do have very, very deep connections in uh, the Middle East through to Western Asia, going back 50,000 years or 40,000 years. Um, but within the last 15,000 years, they've been largely separated from each other. So, 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 so when you when they say European DNA, in most cases, they're, they're in pretty much all cases, they're finding it's it's Western European DNA. Okay, so I know one of the um, the Jews have a, a, a the Cohen haplotype. Cohen, that's a Cohen Y chromosome. So yeah. that's on the Y chromosome. So is that yeah. that's a male lineage? Is that right? That's a male lineage. Yes. Okay. So um, and I want to talk a lot back about to high that. school for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm not a genetics yeah. expert by any stretch. Yeah. Um, but what I'm trying to so I know I don't know if we should go to the Lemba tribe then because I want to talk about the Lemba tribe. I know that was in your book. That was actually something I remember I discovered before mm. I read mm. your book and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Um, so I know the Cohen haplotype is this genetic marker, as I understand it, and please tell me if I'm describing this wrong, mm. but it's a genetic marker that seems to tie back to ancient Israel. And there's a, a group in Africa, uh, a black African tribe, that has this, this link to this, mm. this, mm. this Cohen haplotype. So I guess, what, and, I, and I do want to talk about that, because I know you talk about that in your mm. book, but what I want to say is, uh, is that the only way you can tell somebody's from the Middle East is with that Cohen haplotype, or is there another marker to distinguish that from, say, Western Europe? Uh, well, it's the whole genome. Okay. That, and that's hundreds of thousands of markers on the whole genome that have been used to distinguish uh, Middle Eastern populations. So they don't have a nice little name like Cohen <laughs> or no, anything it's like a, that? It's all the Cohen is is a particular Y chromosome. Um, which was present in the Lemba tribe. Now this is a tribe, they look uh, African, they're in Z Zimbabwe, uh, which is what, is that, is that its current, yeah, it's, I think it's his current name, anyway. So they're from, and they had a tradition, they had oral traditions that were Jewish. Mm -hmm. and, and they built very significant stone-walled cities um, and, but most scholars rejected the fact that they were Jewish. It was quite, it's not uncommon for, for native people in around, all around the world to claim that they've got Jewish ancestry. Um, that happened, the same thing happened in, the Polynesians love the fact that they're Jewish, think they're Jewish, because it ties them into the sort of Christian world, if you like. So anyway, it was rejected and then they did the DNA work and they found clearly that they've got a Semitic Y chromosomes, in particular this Cohen haplotype, which seems to be very common amongst the, uh, the males of the um, priestly class, uh, the Jewish priestly class. So, um, so it just confirmed conclusively that there was Jewish DNA um, that arrived down there. And it, it, it's, their history is that, 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 from what I can recall, it was a, a shipwreck of a Jewish ship that was going down the African coast, mm -hmm. and uh, they, so their boat was shipwrecked, and they all got onto land, and they just migrated in inland, and then they eventually merged with and. Um, a, yeah, a I local thought it was a land migration. It was, a la it was quite a long land migration. Tudor Parfit is a scholar who's studied it, so he's, I think he's tracked where sort of places they were, but they ended up in this place called, um, I think it's called New Greater Great Zimbabwe or New Zimbabwe, the settlement. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a clear case of how DNA, even though they, um, it's a small, fairly small incursion of DNA, they've been able to track it. Yeah, but the... But the uh, Would you the expect to find something similar in the Americas if that, if that were the case? Um, it may not be... I would expect to see, I, I didn't expect to see every single uh, Native American being a Jew, having Jewish DNA. I thought at least there had to be something. Um, I don't know what that percentage is, but we're down now to nothing. We've 15 and a half thousand Native Americans have been tested, their DNA, their mitochondrial DNA tested. 
and it's all Asian or with a smattering of European or African. It's got a lot of, quite a lot of African DNA. Um, but the, the whole genome is now being analysed. Most of the progress in the last four or five years uh, that Hugo is not addressing is the whole genome studies. So, and this is the work that you can get done for yourself through Ancestry.com or um, 23andMe. 23andMe and you know Family Tree DNA. Mm -hmm. I need to get them to become yeah. a sponsor. Well, they <laughs> yeah. I mean they Ugo mentioned them too as well. Yeah. Well, they they um, so they they'll test half a million DNA markers that are scattered all across your chromosomes because your whole genome is enormous. It's three billion letters of DNA compared to sixteen thousand on your mitochondria. Okay, the difference is like comparing a book is your genome, the first word is your mitochondrial DNA. That's the difference in the size. So it's a it's a massive amount of information. But the technology has advanced exponentially over the last ten years. And so they can so they have, you know, about seven hundred thousand markers now that they can genotype very rapidly on an individual or po whole population. And among those 700,000 markers are a whole bunch of markers that are unique to Native Americans. There's a whole bunch of markers that are unique to um, the Druze in Palestine and Palestinians and Jewish related populations and Spanish and English. And that's how these companies are able to sort of give a map of where your DNA came from. And so scientists have used that technology to examine the DNA of several Native American populations, including the Maya, where the, the, the BYU scholars love, and their DNA all goes to either their links tie them to Native populations nearby, to African populations, and to places like England, Ireland, Spain, Portugal, Sardinia, in some cases Greece, but just no ties at all to the Middle East. So it's entirely consistent with the mitochondrial work. It's, uh, it's exactly what you'd expect. Okay. So it's it's you know the getting back to this European admixture thing. You know, don't kid. You know, it's misleading to say oh we don't don't know whether they're pre-Columbian or post-Columbian. Their scientists, whenever they've looked to see where the mitochondrial DNA came from, they can say, yes, it's a Spanish H lineage or T lineage. Okay, and so it, it's pretty clear. Okay. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Simon Southerton. We're not done with him just yet. In our next conversation, we'll talk about Rodney Meldrum's claims to have found DNA among Native Americans here in North America. What does Simon think about this? He doesn't understand the science. He thinks that the scientists foolishly overlooked the connection of the, middle, the, the X lineage to the Middle East, and his whole business is built on his X lineage claim, um, and he's wrong. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you like our page on facebook.com slash gospeltangents. You can subscribe at YouTube at youtube.com slash gospeltangents. We're also on Twitter at gospeltangents, as well as make sure that you subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss any of our episodes. Thanks again for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here you'll see some more of our videos. Thanks again.